<clears throat> Thank you one and all to the 8th International uh, Workshop, which will be conducted in a span of three days, starting from 18th June to 20th June. Today is the day two of the workshop series. Hope you all enjoy the session. About Mediate Guru, Mediate Guru is a social initiative led by members across the globe. The aim of the organization is to bridge the gap between the general public and litigation. We are creating a social awareness campaign for showcasing mediation as the future, having successfully conducted various international webinars promoting alternative dispute resolution, having a reach in more than 100 countries around the world with an international family growing each day. We thrive to provide you the best lecture series through the best speakers around the globe so that you have a value addition day. I feel honored today to welcome our esteemed speaker for session two of the international workshop, Stephanie, F, uh, sorry for the pronunciation, F. Statio, am I right? Uh, Correct. Mr. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. Stephanie is an EU qualified lawyer who has obtained legal training in Greece and also in Germany. She is a UDRP panelist at the SCET uh, Arbitration Court and specializes mainly in domain name and IP disputes as well as international commercial arbitration. She is a holder of three LLM titles and is in the process of becoming a certified mediator. She participates every year as an arbitrator in the William C. V. Smoot and the FDI Moot. She is also an, an uh, ambassador for Arbitrator Intelligence a legal tech company which aims to promote transparency, accountability and diversity in arbitrator selection by increasing access to critical information about arbitrators and their decision making. I would request the speaker to take the session forward and enlighten us all. You all can ask all your questions in the chat box. Madam, you can speak. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the honoring invitation and the kind introduction. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you from wherever you are joining us today. So I have the pleasure and honor to be your guest this, uh, for this eighth international um, workshop of Mediate Guru on, on arbitration. And our topic today will be careers in arbitration. So let me just start the presentation and I hope that you can all see it. All right. Uh, so yeah, I can see. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, as mentioned, careers in arbitration. Well, let's see first of all the outline. Today we will talk about um, how one can proceed a career, uh, pursue a career in arbitration and what this exactly uh, means. So I thought that we would start with um, the universities where everyone is kind of after its uh, graduate, undergraduate studies, is kind of thinking what path he wants or what legal field he wants to specialize in. So a good starting point would be the postgraduate um, program that one selects. Afterwards, we will um, see a little bit more in detail what career paths one can have in arbitration. And then we will um, talk about networking opportunities um, at the moment. So afterwards, we will um, see a little bit about the Young Practitioners Associations that are many out there. And to, I will explain a little bit about um, the associations and um, what specializations uh, there are because some of them are also specialized in some fields of arbitration. And then we will also have an overview of available websites and new initiatives that were created also in light of uh, the pandemic um, and provide you also afterwards with some uh, tips and tricks and later on we'll have the Q&A session. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Mrs. Stephanie. Uh, I don't know if others can see, but actually I cannot see. Uh, do you have your camera open? Yes. Uh, would you yes, mind, you. please, uh, not to bother you to close your camera? Can you see me now? No, actually I can't. I don't know if others can. But can you see the presentation? 
the presentation, yes. Now I can see mm -hmm. you, yeah. Now I okay. can see you. <laughs> Great. Sorry about Sorry that. About <laughs> so, moving on. We will, uh, as mentioned, we will talk about um, universities and what postgraduate programs you can address and um, pursue. So um, there are several specialized graduate programs and uh, some of them are very famous in international arbitration and amongst the arbitration community. Um, starting with uh, maybe the most famous one is the MID the Geneva LLM in International Dispute uh, Settlement, uh, which is a leading program with a distinguished faculty and talented class aiming at building a successful career as a well-rounded lawyer. And um, for all of the corners of international dispute settlement, uh, a lot of uh, legends of the arbitration community belong to the faculty of uh, this LLM program, like, for example, um, Ms. Gabrielle Kaufmann Kohler, um, Professor uh, Vandenberg, Professor Terchier, and many, many others. So, this one is one of the top notch uh, LLM programs, for example. Then we have next uh, Sciences Po. Sciences Po uh, is in Paris, and uh, the core matter of this program is uh, the study of transnational uh, arbitration in all its forms. Uh, the program is also covering other mechanisms of international dispute settlement. These include judicial and non judicial means of dispute resolution. Um, such as litigation before the International Court of Justice at the World Trade Organization, um, human rights litigation, and for example, the European or American framework for that. Um, in addition, the program is offering an insight into litigation before domestic courts, recourse to mediation, and online dispute settlement. It is for one year and it also provides for a 15, 14 uh, weeks uh, internship as part of the program. So moving on, um, we have the Stockholm uh, University, uh, which has also a very interesting LLM in international commercial arbitration. Um, it is also one of the top rankings in, in, in global ranking lists. Throughout um, this program, the students uh, hone their skills in, present, in presentation, researching, and writing, leading, um, uh, to two major projects, uh, a complete mock arbitration that is provided by the program and a master thesis, uh, which will be presented, of course, in the end. Afterwards, we have the Humboldt University, uh, which is in Berlin, here in Germany. Um, the law faculty of uh, Humboldt University of Berlin offers uh, also one year um, full-time graduate degree program in International Dispute Resolution, IDR. Um, with uh, a strong emphasis on international arbitration. The master's program is open also to all uh, law graduates from jurisdictions around the world and is also taught exclusively in English. Um, Buterius Law School is also one of the German um, universities, uh, which is uh, based in, in Hamburg. And um, it, it has an English taught master of law and business. Uh, where one can prepare um, for international career in which an understanding of both legal and business concepts um, is essential. And it provides for either an LLM degree or a Master of um, Business, um, which means that, uh, as far as I know, there can be a certain path during the program where you can have elective courses or some other courses elected. Um, where you can uh, choose to specialize in arbitration and therefore you will have the LLM in arbitration after the program is concluded. Um, moreover, we have Miami Law School, um, which is uh, with, with, with an actually interesting LLM, which is called um, often the Widen Case International Arbitration LLM, um, as far as I know, because the main sponsor is Widen Case for that. Um, provides a unique individualized educational um, opportunity for a small group of uh, quality students. I think they um, take a much uh, lesser amount of students than the other programs. Um, and, but of course, the, the students are also from a range of countries all over the world. 
Um, and those students uh, who wish to acquire an in-depth grounding in the field of uh, international arbitration um, will have also a great opportunity with that LLM and a successful career for sure. Um, the program also offers a specialized theoretical and practical courses in, ar in arbitration, and there is a broad selection of related subjects, including courses offering a focus on um, Latin America for future practitioners wishing to pursue a career involving interest in that region, for example. Um, and then, uh, last but not least, we have the International Hellenic University in Greece, which is based in the beautiful city of Thessaloniki. Um, it can be obtained full-time or part-time, uh, and it is only over the weekend, so that it can also provide you with the opportunity to work during the week. Um, it has visiting professors from all over the world and gives you a great perspective for um, a broader kind of uh, perspective for fields other also than uh, arbitration, but also arbitration in the banking sector, as you know, as you will see in the program, or arbitration and mediation, ODR, and other uh, elective courses that uh, can be obtained there. The scientific director of this program is Professor Emeritus Caesis, which uh, who is a well-established arbitrator and a professor of law, not only in Greece, but also in Germany and in other countries. This program is also taught in English uh, exclusively. So, moving on to the next slide, we have the career path. So now there are some uh, several options to for one to um, uh, to obtain a career in arbitration, and those would be arbitration practitioner, of course. But then again, we have the um, often the question if I should go to a boutique law firm or to big law, or should I go first to a boutique law firm and then big law, or the other way around. So this is a big question where um, we can address that also in the questions later, but I will have also one other slide um, in, in, the, in the following slide. So um, then we have a niche arbitration practice. A niche arbitration practice would be that you would um, specialize only or focus only in uh, one field of arbitration, let's say sports arbitration or IP arbitration, tax, domain name arbitration, as I am also focusing. M&A um, is also a very popular uh, selection of uh, niche fields. Um, energy arbitration uh, as well. Arbitrator um, is a legal, is a profession or a pathway which, uh, of course, cannot be obtained from the beginning. Um, there has to be some, of course, legal practice beforehand or to work either as an assistant to an arbitrator, as an arbitral secretary for many years, or to gain experience, of course, in the law firm as a practitioner, and afterwards, with your experience um, to be sure that you can also be an independent arbitrator and um, create maybe also your own practice. So this comes uh, with the years of experience. Then, of course, um, one can also combine mediation and arbitration and be an arbitrator and a mediator as well. Um, administrative staff of arbitral institutions uh, is also a career path one can take. And this would mean that you would be uh, employed by the arbitral institutions, leading arbitral institutions all over the world, like uh, ICC, the uh, SIAC in Singapore, HKAC, the Hong Kong uh, Center for International Arbitration, and many, many others, like the LCIA in London, um, and many others. Uh, all of them have administrative staff, and it depends on each institution, uh, what criteria there are, and what requirements there are for um, admitting you as an administrative staff. And then there is also the academic pathway where, of course, you will have to have a PhD, um, but afterwards you can uh, become a professor of law, a lecturer, or even a visiting professor um, while you are a practitioner because visiting professors can be uh, professors that are, for example, lawyers, but uh, combine also their 
identity of holding a PhD uh, and uh, visit universities around the world, uh, giving lectures on international arbitration, investment arbitration, or whatever um, field you have chosen in arbitration. So, mentioning the um, the question about whether to go to big law or uh, a boutique law firm. Uh, well, of course, it kind of depends, and one can um, well, one should decide uh, on on his own on, or on her own what um, she or he wants to do first or uh, in the second place, and how you can maybe combine your career with uh, being in big law or in, and the boutique law firm afterwards or in the first place. But here are some examples of some uh, companies that uh, some law firms that are uh, either in big law and uh, big law means that they are international legal firms that have um, uh, a lot of law that, that have a lot of um, firms uh, in in a lot of countries and worldwide which is, for example, Hogan Lovells, uh, headquarters in London and uh, Washington, D.C., a uh, British American law firm, but has also a lot of other offices uh, around the world. Uh, Wilmer Hale is also one of the big ones, uh, Freshfield, White and Case, Sherman and Sterling, and many, many others that have uh, their departments or their practice groups on international arbitration. They are not only focus on international arbitration they have many practice groups but uh, they have also uh, practice groups and very famous ones uh, in arbitration then we have the boutique law firms the boutique law firms are um, mainly a spin-off of the people that were in big law before and uh, it has been observed that in the last couple of years there were a lot of boutique law firms created. Um, there are a lot of big uh, boutique law firms uh, in each jurisdiction, and it it depends on whether uh, on where you want to go and where you want to practice. So you should always uh, obtain the information for that jurisdiction that is of interest to you. Um, some boutique law firms that I have uh, listed here are, for example, the um, GVS disputes that are um, actually a quite new boutique law firm in Paris. Uh, GVS stands for Gaillard, Bani Fatemi, and Shobaya. Uh, Emmanuel Gaillard, for example, um, for those who don't know him, is uh, was, unfortunately, he passed away this year. Um, on April, um, he was a, a famous professor of law and international arbitration, and he was many years in Sherm at Sherman and Sterling and headed their arbitration department there. And um, he created recently, I think... So, in sorry, madam, sorry. Uh, we cannot actually see you. The presentation is stuck. And I can see from the chat box as well. Can you try again, please? Moving on, like I said, GBS, Gayao Banifatemi Salbaya, and uh, Emmanuel Gayao uh, was a professor of law, and he recently created this boutique law firm, who is a, which is an international law firm uh, with similar focus, managing international disputes in a result-oriented and innovative manner. Um, then we have LK, LKK law firm, uh, Levi Kaufman Kohler um, in Geneva, also the law firm of Professor Kaufman Kohler, um, who is also a legend in international arbitration, and um, Busta Disputes, which is um, a law firm here in Frankfurt, Hannefeld, which is also a boutique law firm, very famous in uh, Hamburg, uh, and Lex Arbitri uh, in Mumbai. There are also a lot others um, that are not mentioned here, but um, as, as said, you can always look at the jurisdiction you want to uh, to practice and see where what what boutique law firms there are moving on um here are the networking opportunities well there are a lot of networking opportunities but the most famous ones and the uh, ones that are actually 
um, having the better, the, the most results, to say, where a lot of people um, interested in international arbitration, a lot of students inter interested in international arbitration are going there uh, to to make contacts and uh, promote their career paths, for example, um, are the moot courts and arbitration summer schools or academy. And starting with the moot court, uh, of course, the most famous one is the Wilhelm C. This the International Commercial Arbitration Moot Court, which is an annual moot court every year um, with its final round in Vienna uh, around March, April. Um, and a lot of uh, teams all around the world, university teams take uh, part in this uh, this moot, but there are before the this moot also other preliminary rounds um, where you can take part in other mini Pre meet 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 moot court, um, so as to prepare for this one. Um, so this is the most famous one uh, in international commercial arbitration. Then there is one in investment arbitration, which is the FDI, uh, the FDI moot, foreign direct investment uh, international arbitration moot, uh, which is also in an annual basis conducted and it has uh, also um, all over the world some some rounds uh, where you can have, for example, the Africa round, the Asian round, and then in the end there are the global rounds. Uh, you can always uh, participate when you're a student as a, as a student with your university team or uh, afterwards when you have already gained the experience of uh, a multi of being uh, in a team uh, of a university, uh, you can always uh, be an arbitrator for those mood courts. And this is also a very important factor for, for your career and for your experience afterwards. So moving on, there is a, the Alfred Deakin mood, which is from the university, from the Deakin University. Uh, in Australia, it is a relatively new moot court. Um, I think it was established in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. And um, the Deakin University is also one of uh, Australia's leading tertiary education uh, providers. So um, this is also worthwhile um, be per to participate there. Uh, and of course, a very great, a great opportunity is also the first international arbitration moot court by Mediate Guru. Uh, which is uh, held uh, this year in September, if I'm not mistaken. Then there are arbitration summer schools and academies, which are um, very helpful also to connect with peers, to meet um, other persons in international arbitration involved, um, to meet also a lot of professors if one is not already in the stage of uh, going for a postgraduate degree. One can also be um, part of, a, of an arbitration summer school or academy. And there you also meet a lot of practitioners and professors. First of all, there is the Paris uh, Arbitration Academy. Um, this, this one is uh, one of the most famous ones as well. And the academy provides uh, an advanced summer course in Paris to students and young practitioners interested in international arbitration. It is very intense, but um, uh, very, very interesting to participate in it. And uh, it uh, takes place in Paris in for, for two weeks. ELSA Law Schools, um, ELSA being the European Law Students Association, they have law schools and uh, not only summer schools, but also they do provide also winter schools. Um, they, as far as I know, um, and according to the practice of the last years, they also accept students that are outside of uh, Europe or outside of becoming being a member of the association. Um, there is a, a different price range for those uh, who want to become part of those uh, summer schools or winter schools, but you will have the opportunity to go to one of them uh, for sure. And for the other ones that are uh, in Europe or a member of ELSA, um, there is no problem there anyway. Um, two of them that I would suggest 
uh, and uh, I have also participated in them. So I know firsthand that they are of a very high quality. Is the Dispute Resolution Summer School in Vienna, uh, which is also conducted every year, and the Investment Arbitration Summer School in Africa. Then we have the ICC summer course. Uh, this is an annual course in July, also taking place in, in, in Paris, um, in the premises of the ICC. Um, the course is providing insight into both theoretical and practical aspects of international arbitration in general, as well as arbitrations conducted under the ICC rules of arbitration. Of course, it is very focused on the ICC rules. And the program um, is also focusing on arbitration agreements and uh, starting an arbitration, setting up an arbitral tribunal, issues related to jurisdiction and procedure and arbitral awards. This is also a very um, helpful uh, course when you want to engage with the ICC rules and get to know them uh, a bit better. Um, then international arbitration training courses in, Le in Leiden. And um, this course is um, offered by Leiden Law School uh, in the Netherlands in cooperation also with the Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague um, and focuses on the theory and practice of international arbitration as a distinct field of the law and uh, field of legal practice. Uh, the fifth edition of this uh, arbitration training uh, course will take place online this year um, from 28th June to 2nd July 2021. And of course, um, as I probably be mentioned before, ICC summer, this, the ICC summer course is uh, taking place in the premises of the ICC, of course, whenever then there is no pandemic, because I guess every um, course that has been uh, conducted during the last two years was only virtually. Moving on. So now we go to the topic Young Practitioners Association. The Young Practitioners Association are many around the world and it depends what your preferences are, where what jurisdiction you are in and um, where probably you want to practice afterwards if it's not in your home jurisdiction. And there are quite a few that you can become member. Most of them are um, free of charge. Becoming a member is free of charge and uh, meaning the young meaning under 40 most of the time. So probably the most of you will have a lot of years in front ahead of them uh, until becoming 40, so you can already engage with those associations. Um, there is the Young ICA uh, Association, it's one of the most famous ones. They have a lot of projects, a lot of, um, also they, they conduct researches and publish reports it is a very helpful association to be part of. They also conduct workshops, uh, for example, for um, examination of witnesses or cross-examination or other um, aspects of, of international arbitration that um, one is not really able to see sometimes and experience themselves because maybe a bit more senior practitioners are, are taking the lead on those on those kind of parts of arbitration. So this is a very helpful way to get um, to get accustomed with, let's say, cross examination, for example. Young ICA um, has its own website as every association. So uh, check them out and become a member. It's uh, as I said, free of charge, and also they all have newsletters, so it is also very helpful to be um, a member or subscribe for the newsletter so you get all the uh, needed uh, notifications um, and you don't miss anything out. Young SIAC is the association of the Singapore International Arbitration Center. Young ETA, um, also uh, from the Institute for Transnational uh, Arbitration. Um, this uh, 40 is uh, the association uh, of practitioners under 40 of the German Institute of Arbitration. Um, ASA below 40 is also the association of Swiss Arbitration Association. 
CR Business Center for International Arbitration and has also a membership and a newsletter. Ixted is, however, the um, uh, more specialized uh, practitioners association for uh, practitioners that are uh, especially interested in investment arbitration, uh, since Ixted is the International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes. Then we have uh, Arbitral Women and Nude of Thursdays for women only. Arbitral Women is an association that was created by women for women in international arbitration. Since um, there has been a movement over the past few years that uh, a bit more uh, women should join arbitration or should be um, should have equal rights in in, in the arbitration community and get promoted equally as their uh, male counterparts. And this uh, is a great initiative for all women wanting to work in international arbitration. Nude of Thursdays is an initiative also only for women, which is a 30 minute talk every Thursday, um, where some of the members or some guest speakers are invited to have a 30 minute talk about a subject uh, of interest in international arbitration and um, uh, then other women can join and pose questions have a discussion and also make contact that way and then um, finally we have the mood alumni association maa which is the association for everyone who participated mostly in uh, the this mood but also in any other uh, arbitration mood and um, this is also one, uh, one, one association which provides for a lot of opportunities like becoming a observer for several, um, several uh, sessions that uh, UNCITRAL, for example, is uh, holding uh, every year and becoming a member at MAA, you will have the opportunity to be an observer. And when there is no pandemic to actually be there at the sessions, either uh, in Vienna or New York or wherever. Then we have um, all of these associations and it's important to mention that they provide, or some of them at least, they provide for mentorship programs. And the mentorship programs are very helpful to evolve and get advice from established practitioners in the field. Which means when uh, there is a, a mentorship program from, that, from those associations, you can have a, an application, send an application in as a mentee to be mentored by leading practitioners or um, persons involved in international arbitration. And this would really boost your career so i really recommend to take part in those mentorship programs the next slide is about the websites and new initiatives new initiatives um in international arbitration they have been there have been observed a lot of new initiatives in light of the pandemic and during the past one and a half years and I, I certainly have not included all of them because I have the feeling that every month there is a really a new initiative um, coming up, which is a great thing and so inspiring. Um, and uh, but I have uh, I have uh, selected the most uh, important ones maybe um, here in this slide. And we will start with the careers in arbitration by Amanda Lee, um, who is also an international uh, arbitrator and also director for Arbitral Women, um, a great personality. And she uh, has all, always great input and ideas for the arbitration community. And she also created a careers in arbitration. It is um, First of all, it was a hashtag uh, on LinkedIn for um, for exchanging opportunities, um, career opportunities and job postings between the community. Um, uh, but it is, as far as I know now, also a web, like a like a like a side of on LinkedIn where uh, you can go there and see all of the postings. Of course, also with the hashtag careers in arbitration. 
And um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, at least Amanda has also a, a Twitter account and she is also posting those career and arbitration hashtags posting uh, on Twitter. So uh, when whenever you really want to have an overview of all the job postings that are uh, available right now in, in arbitration, uh, this is the place to go. And it is uh, beyond amazing that you just have one place and you are all always covered. Um, so I really do recommend to have a look at it. Um, then we have the digital coffee break in arbitration by Svenja Wachtel. Svenja is uh, also a um, uh, counsel in international arbitration and uh, she uh, is uh, working in big law. And she is also always ahead of her time, has great ideas and she created uh, if I'm not mistaken, 2019 or 2020, the digital coffee break and arbitration where she conducts uh, interviews um, and uh, she addresses the change in international arbitration resulting from, from digital transformation. Um, this is also a very uh, nice way to spend your afternoon with a coffee uh, while reading her interviews. So uh, that's why also the title. Next, we have My Arbitration by Victoria Pernt. Um, this is a YouTube series um, of uh, videos about international arbitration, where she also uh, promotes practitioners and uh, has uh, has uh, has also her um, style, her very uh, refreshing style of conducting uh, their, his, her interviews and also especially making them. Uh, quick and easy and uh, short, uh, but uh, very comprehensive and very interesting. So in in maybe, I don't know, 10 or 20 minutes, you can just watch every time her, her episodes, every week her episodes, and um, learn a little bit more about international arbitration. Then we have Africa in the Mood. This is a very new initiative uh, which uh, has been brought up in 2021, I think. Uh, very, very, very new. Um, or 2020, maybe. And the mission is to help to unlock the potential of international arbitration in Africa. Um, they support students in their participation in the, uh, in the VISMO. Um, they they also support them by by coaching them uh, either remotely since uh, everything was uh, virtually uh, during the past years and on the ground uh, and they provide the know-how the organizational and also financial support for universities in Africa. And then we have arbitrator intelligence. Arbitrator intelligence provides parties, um, counsel also and, and counsel with a unique valuable data and analytics to enable them to make informed arbitra, uh, arbitrator selection and case strategy decisions. Um, they provide an online platform and uh, extensive industry relations where they produce reports for arbitrators, um, uh, because then you will have a much clearer view of what arbitrator you can choose or who is the arbitrator which, who is um, mainly the best fit for your case. So using uh, also artificial intelligence sometimes and uh, information and data collected um, through crucial feedback from parties and counsel and uh, others who might participate in, in arbitrations with um, some, some arbitrators. They give that feedback back to arbitrator intelligence and um, then there is a report uh, created on, on that individual. Um, of course, parties and everyone else is uh, staying confidential. And then there is CyberArp. Um, CyberArp is an initiative with a multidisciplinary and international legal and tech team. Uh, and they study the intersection between cybersecurity and international arbitration and ADR. Um, the team is committed to raising awareness and providing practical guidance and mitigating mainly cyber risks 
in arbitration um, and developing roadmaps, uh, a noted procedure order, templates, workshops, blog articles, podcasts, and other forms of um, useful material for um, arbitrations and being aware of uh, the, the, the hazards that the digital era has. Moving on, we have ArpTech. This is a very new initiative as well. ArpTech is an online forum that fosters cross-disciplinary uh, dialogue on the future of justice and technology, such as AI, distributed online ledgers, cybersecurity, and computational linguistics. And then we have also several podcasts uh, that are also very fun and very interesting to listen to every week. Uh, the Tales of the Tribunal and uh, the T on International Arbitration. The Tales of the Tribunal has its own website and the T on International Arbitration is uh, on Spotify. And then the newest of them all, I would say, is uh, Arbitration Happy Hour on Clubhouse. Uh, Clubhouse being the new app invented and also uh, available for Android users uh, since, I don't know, since last month, I guess, uh, which is hosted by Svenja Vastel and um, uh, Sneha from Yusmundi. Uh, Yusmundi, I will talk a little bit about it uh, in the next slide. Um, and it is hosted every Thursday at 6 p.m. Central European time. And you can just join and listen to whatever um, topic it is discussed every Thursday. Every Thursday is another topic and uh, they have very interesting topics, uh, great discussions and also very engaged uh, speakers. And um, then at the end, there is a great dialogue uh, with the speakers and uh, the audience. So next up is uh, tips and tricks. Um, here I will have two slides where I can give you an overview of some tips and tricks that I would also be very grateful if someone would have told me when I was uh, starting my career in arbitration. But um, you're all very lucky to be per to be participating in that in that webinar in that sense. So um, of course, there, it is always helpful to have done some voluntary work as an undergraduate student in in the field let's say try to find a professor or try to find a law firm where you can say, hey, I want to spend some time here and experience uh, the way that international arbitration works so that uh, at least I also can see if that is something that I like and suited for me. And then uh, whilst also being an undergraduate student, of course, but also later on in your career, it is very helpful to write art articles to engage with your peers in that way and to get your name out there um, and um, also improve your scientific uh, scientific thinking. Um, for example, I have listed here the Young Arbitration Review, uh, which is the first independently quarterly online publication dedicated to international arbitration. And this is mainly also focusing on young practitioners and lawyers with expertise and interest in international arbitration. Um, I think there are two or three issues issued every year. So you can write an article and submit it um, and of course uh, check the criteria and the requirements for the articles uh, because every, every uh, publication has its own. Um, but um, this is a nice the start for you to publish an article. Then we have um, internships, internship opportunities in major arbitrary institutions. Every or probably most, uh, if not all, arbitrary institutions um, provide for internships every year. Uh, for example, the ICC, the DIS here in Germany, the LCIA, the London Court of International Arbitration, they have annual internship opportunities. Some of them might not be remunerated, and some others uh, do, but it is always a nice start for your career and for your CV to be part of uh, an arbitrary institution in that way and um, have some insight. 
Then we have Yusmundi. Yusmundi, as mentioned, um, Yusmundi is a legal tech offering easy access to international legal resources by combining international legal expertise and in artificial intelligence. And it provides uh, intelligent research tools for international arbitration lawyers. And at the moment, they have several job openings. So check their website and um, maybe you will find something of interest there. Um, so then afterwards, I would say that a tip from my side would be that you should try to specialize in your own jurisdiction first and be in a, in a good command of your chosen field. Um, for example, if it, this is M&A, to know all about M&A and specialize in that, in that field first before moving on to dispute resolution or and, and then wanting to specialize in dispute resolution in MA disputes, for example, um, as a as a niche uh, as a niche uh, field. Um, and uh, always uh, be be mindful that uh, procedural law matters. So being good in procedural law is also very helpful. Um, Furthermore, um, LinkedIn profile is very important, of course, for you who want to now start getting out there and uh, sending applications or connecting with peers, with professors, with uh, practitioners, with colleagues, etc. It is a very, it, it's a very important part of uh, who you are and how the world is perceiving you and the community uh, is perceiving you. So LinkedIn, so, so the LinkedIn profile should be up to date. Of course, you should have a professional uh, picture and a good, comprehensive and compact description of yourself. And it provides also for this sign on on your profile picture lately, where you can uh, where you can tell the others um, that you're open to work. So use that. This is very helpful. And uh, then connect with practitioners and let them know that. Um, you're open to new challenges or why you admire their work and be mindful there that um, you shouldn't really ask them for an opportunity right away but just make the contact and say why you admire them or how you would maybe useful to them and then get the conversation going and um, uh, because approaching them in the right way uh, is uh, an extremely thin line let's say but no one would just say, "Oh my God, why did you um, did you uh, send me a message on LinkedIn or whatever?" And the worst that you, uh, that can happen is that they don't um, that they won't answer to you. But um, this is a part of uh, reaching out. This shouldn't be a fear of yours that um, nobody will answer. If you do it the right way, then uh, people will answer and then you will uh, start a conversation, a conversation and um, this will very, this will help you. Then, um, of course, there are one more thing on LinkedIn. There are a lot of uh, uh, searches of job searches that you can um, save. Uh, also on Google, you only have to configure your selected criteria for the job and have a weekly notification, and this will allow you not to lose an opportunity when it's being posted on LinkedIn. Um, so afterwards, you have uh, career events and fairs, and also be prepared for that. So mainly when you go to a career fair or career event, have your CV, um, have a presentation or a pitch for yourself ready, and be prepared to go after uh, whatever uh, opportunity there is. Also, one thing that is important or is helpful, at least in in arbitration, is the dual qualification, meaning that after you pass the bar, for example, if you're an Indian student or an Indian practitioner, after you have passed the Indian bar, um, to maybe have a thought of becoming a solicitor in England, uh, or maybe one thing that is very popular in the arbitration community is to have an LLM in, in, in the US and then become a New York 
bar um, attorney or a California bar to pass the California or the New York bar. Um, this is always um, very helpful and it is uh, seen in, in the community as a great asset. Then moving on, we have one last tip, which is um, to get a certification, a professional certification in international arbitration, which means um, that uh, are, there are a lot of training courses, some certificate courses that you can obtain a, a certification. Um, for example, there is a certificate in international commercial investment arbitration by the University of Rome, together with the ICC and the Center for Arbitration uh, of Milan, CAM, um, who offer a, an annual also certification course, um, which is normally held in Rome, but I suppose that these years they have been um, they, they, they have been conducting it virtually. Then we have the CR Diploma in International Commercial Arbitration, which is uh, certainly also conducted virtually this year. And then there are also other ADR trainings from other centers like the ADR, ODR International, uh, and other drafting courses to improve your drafting skills, uh, and a lot of other training courses that you can have uh, from all other centers. Uh, you just have to search for them, have a look at it, and uh, each time decide what is uh, suitable for your for your pathway and for, for your career. So mainly this is it. And um, I want to thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you so much, uh, Miss, for the insightful presentation. Now we will take some questions from our lovely audience. Thank you so much. Give me one second just to check for the questions. So I got one question. Is LLM necessary to start a career in arbitration? I wouldn't say that it is necessary. Well, it depends, of course, but it is a requirement that most of the practitioners or persons in the community have. So I, I tend to say that it could be a prerequisite, yes. And if you see, well, well if you check a lot of job postings other than internships, of course, you will see that a lot of them have the requirement already that you will have to have to, to have an LLM or um, be specialized in any other way in, in uh, international arbitration. Thank you for your answer. So we got the last question. Uh, are there virtual internships in international arbitration? And how can I get access to such? So virtual internships, yes, they have become, let's say, a small hype. Um, but also, it's, it's, it's not only a hype, but it was a necessity um, during COVID. So uh, there are mostly some of the opportunities uh, for internships that uh, were uh, possible before the pandemic. They have been conducted virtually over these um, one and a half years. And you only have to look for them, as mentioned, under careers and arbitration, for example. And every time the internships are also that they are listed there are also mentioning whether they will be held remotely, virtually or not. And um, it is only, I guess, a matter of time that uh, we go back to normal. but. Of course, this um, kind of uh, this kind of uh, virtual environment or or progress that we have made in that sense will be maintained. So even after the pandemic, I guess there will be some uh, internships that will be virtual. 
Thank you, Miss Stephanie. Um, thank you for such a vibrant, interactive and knowledgeable session. I'm sure we all got to learn some amazing things today. I would also like to thank all the participants for joining us. Before concluding today's session, I would like to take the opportunity to introduce the International Arbitration Mood Competition 2021 that will be hosted by Mediate Guru this upcoming September. The registration are open for arbitration enthusiasts from all across the globe. It will be a landmark uh, opportunity to learn the practical insights of arbitration. For more information, don't forget to visit uh, www.mediateguru.com. On uh, extensive demand from our participants, Mediate Guru has launched 40 hours mediation training program provided to mediation enthusiasts by expert US based mediator, Ms. Kathleen Rowan Liddy. Early bird uh, scholarship till 31st July is valid now. Hurry up and don't miss this limited opportunity. And I would request everyone to please fill up the feedback form before you leave in order to receive your certificates. Uh, if you don't want to miss any updates from Mediate Guru, follow us on our social media handlers and also join the WhatsApp updates group sent in the chat box. Stay healthy, stay safe. See you all soon. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.